my dear loved ones as we come to this next session and uh, it's we are continuing our uh, talk cleaning the rooms of our temple the holy spirit living in each one of us remember we are the temple of the living god and uh, last time we saw that beautiful scripture from proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 brother charles can you read that death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits yes last time we saw you know that uh, importance of the tongue in you know, the death and life are in the power of the li- of the tongue and that yeah, last time we saw about the importance of how we have to be careful that we don't you know bring spiritual death by saying things which are going to hurt insult our lord so you know the last time all the scriptures which i did not send like in the beginning of the talk i said with all do you love i did not send it because none of you all realized that it was not sent except for one sister okay uh, sister merlin the others you all took it easy you know when you all are taking things easy that means the lord just showed me don't send it from now on i'm not going to share it if you are really serious you want to grow in the word of god you want to change our lives you want to enter heaven you're going to benefit from this talk then you better be serious every one of us we need if you'll want it you know you i know you can get so much of stuff from anywhere but you know one question i have even if you go attend you know whichever beautiful so many beautiful sessions we have you know especially the one i love is father joseph adat you know from the divine uk but my question to all of you who are attending that also you know don't make it a thing which is going to tickle your ears oh good talk we enjoyed it no who cares for that my question to you all is don't answer me also how many of you all who are listening to the stocks of father joseph adatu put it on pause and highlight the scriptures or write out the scriptures somewhere so that you can read it again and again after that talk how many of you remember the talk, the word of god which has been given so freely by our heavenly father at this time point of time how many how many of you in my remnant group with all you love how many of you are remembering whatever i'm teaching very few and you know i'm not calling you all pigs but jesus says do not throw pearls in front of pigs because he what he meant was don't waste your time only people who are thirsty if you are thirsty you come and i will feed you i'll you know i'll satisfy your thirst if you're not thirsty if you and i are not thirsty there's no point you know you may drink water you just vomit out so with all due love that's why i tell you again it's a small group we are the remnant again and again i'm telling you, you know the song we sang in the beginning these are the days of elijah these are the days of ezekiel you are seeing what's going on everywhere in the world you are seeing what's going on so don't miss, miss the boat noah called and invited and told everybody people made fun of him but when the real day came they came knocking at the door of the ark sorry it's too late when the foolish virgins came knocking at the door of the bride bridegroom the bridegroom said sorry i did not know you no serious and the word of god is the one thing which can help you and me at this point of time when the problems are going to increase and these are the areas where we are learning about the importance of cleaning the rooms of our temple you know with all the sin and with all the small things with the mouth and with all the things that we are teaching don't expect to get blessings from the lord okay don't don't come like a beggar you know oh jesus bless my son bless my home bless my finances no you're not going to get it we have to make sure that the temple is clean he is in in us you can't call mother teresa into your house when your house is dirty or littered up no you can't call a vip to your house my dear loved ones you know it's very important very very important very important my dear loved ones to be serious be serious now even if you are missing the talk i say don't worry you just send me a message and i'll send it to you now from now on the lord said only you know so please pay attention you know these are very important it's going to save your life it's going to save your family my family it's going to save our souls so with all due respect let's go so today like we said we are going to start on the second i mean the third thing on the speech room which is encouraging others with our words encouraging others Okay let's take those scriptures Romans chapter 15 verse 5 Yes my brother Thank you 
grow uh, may the word of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus yes why i am quoting this is because st paul reminds us he says may the god of steadfastness and encouragement he's the god of steadfastness and he's a god of encouragement he is not a god who is standing there to punish us no he is a god from the beginning of time you see he's encouraging the people of god don't worry i am with you do not fear i am going to help you remember that and it is your duty my duty to encourage our loved ones our loved ones with the way we speak it's just the opposite what we are doing right now is just the opposite my dear loved ones just the opposite so this is what st paul says may the god of steadfastness and encouragement grant you and me to live in harmony with one another in accordance with christ jesus next scripture joshua chapter 1 verse 9 one of the beautiful scriptures which that encouraging scriptures which god tells the people of israel when moses died listen to what he says hallelujah i hereby command you be strong and courageous do not be frightened or dismayed for the lord your god is with you wherever you go yes this is not moses saying moses died and the heavenly father was telling the israelites to joshua he says i hereby command you be strong and be courageous do not be frightened or dismayed because the lord your god is with you wherever you go my dear loved ones our god of encouragement is telling us even now today and when things are going to get tough okay believe me this is not end of story here in america we just got the news 86% of the people now being admitted in our hospitals are afflicted by delta 3 and yesterday we got the sad news that in my own city of houston the first case of lambda from south america peru another form of covid 19 has come in houston it's starting and that's one of the worst you know the types of covid 19 the brain starts bleeding and very few people can be saved thousands died in peru thank god it's come to america aha yes so in the midst of all these problems our god is saying be strong be courageous don't be frightened don't be dismayed for the lord your god the lord our god the god of encouragement is with us wherever we go don't get scared and the one technique of the devil is to make us scared to get make us get worried to make us get worried and upset and sad and all the negative things and it's going to increase it's going to increase but here is the, and then he would encourage us but it is our duty your duty my duty to encourage our loved ones yes let's read john 14 27 what jesus himself says hallelujah <laughs> peace i leave you i leave you my peace i give to you i do not give to you as the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid yes jesus saying before he's leaving this world he's telling his disciples peace my peace not the world's peace the peace of jesus which is beyond human understanding which is beyond all human understanding that real peace you know today i can tell you Today in my testimony is that peace no matter what problem comes in my life in my family in my children wherever I'm not worried at all because I am filled with that peace unshakable peace and this is what I tell everybody get that peace get that unshakable faith then only you and I can survive then only we can defeat the enemy and he says do not let your hearts be troubled do not let them be afraid do not be afraid you know we get troubled when we go to all these problems what about the next one hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 and 25 let's read that hallelujah and let us consider how to how how to provoke one another to love and good deeds not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching aha as you see the day approaching okay the day is coming very very soon maybe it may be for another thousand years don't worry about it but what about your day my day we don't know when we have to come before the lord right that day is approaching they say brother this is being said so many thousands of years ago yes right right 
But what about your day, my day? Do you know when you and I will have to go from this earth? We have to encourage one another to make sure that we do not miss the boat. And here it says, I love verse 25, it says, let us consider how to provoke. <laughs> you know, we know that word provoking means, oh, she provoked me into committing sin. She provoked me, that my son provoked me to lose my cool. My daughter provoked me because of her stupid behavior. She made me commit sin, made me lose my patience. Provoke, no. But here, the word of God says, let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds. To provoke one another to love and good deeds. That's what I'm doing. I'm provoking you all. Maybe I'm, sometimes I, I'm a bit strict or I, you know, I speak a bit loud and all that. Why? For what? I'm not getting anything. It's to provoke each one of you, my brothers and sisters, to love. Provoking you to be in love. The love of Jesus, the love of our God should fill us and overflow. Provoking to make you, hey, brother Charles, come on, come on, come on. Everybody, you know, everything I'm saying, provoking one another to love and to do good things, good deeds, especially with the way we talk, the simplest thing, the way we talk at home with one another. What a shame, even now, even now, I know so many people who are attending all these retreats. I know so many people who are in the Word of God, they are still not able to control their tongue. They're still not able. What, what's the use? Stop this nonsense. I always say, stop it. You're listening to all the word of God, this, that, everywhere. Monday, Thursday's remnant. What's the use if you and I do not change? And But the duty is I keep on. I'll keep on encouraging you all till the last breath, till my last breath to encourage you to reach that high level of spirituality, of holiness without which you and I will never, never, never enter heaven. Serious. Serious. It's all about the souls, my dear loved ones. What are these talks for what? It's about the soul, your soul, my soul, for which Jesus came and died on that cross. And you and I can miss that by the silly ways we speak. I want to encourage you all to start changing. And then it says, not neglecting to meet together. This is what we're doing. Mondays, Thursdays. Thank God we are meeting. The remnant is meeting at least twice a week. Not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, we are doing that. But encouraging one another. One another and all the more as you see the day approaching. You know, I spend a lot of time with some of you all, especially Brother Charles, Sandra, some of my spiritual sons, we talk each other. We encourage when they say, Lo, Uncle, this one. And I try to help them. One, We need to help one another. You have to help me to encourage me. You know, that is the way it is. Let us not, you know, forget that. To provoke. But what are we doing right now? We are provoking one another into committing sin. With the words we speak. With the words we speak. Are we, you know, are we provoking them to come to that high way of holiness? To come to that high level of spirituality? Provoking them? Instead, we are provoking our loved ones at home to make them commit sin, to make them lose the blessings of the Lord, right? Check our lives, the way you and I speak at home with one another, check. We have to change in that area, my dear loved ones. What about Romans 15 verse 2? Hallelujah. Each of us must please our neighbor for the good purpose of building up the neighbor. Yeah, brother, I want to read there. You just... Uh, uh, you know, the stress word went a bit ahead. Can you read that with one more yes. stress word? That stress yes. word I want you to read. Read it. Yes, yes. Each of us must please our neighbor. No, sorry, missed it, missed it. One more time, one more time. Each of us must please no, our it, neighbor. No, missed it, missed it, missed it. One more time. Each of us must please ah, our yes. neighbor. Each of us must no two ways about it. Must, M-U-S-T. The word of God tells you, you try. Try your best. Do your best. No. It says point blank. It says each of us, you and me, must, M-U-S-T. No two ways about it. Must please your neighbor, your loved one, your husband, your wife, your children, your father-in-law, your sweetheart. Must, must please your neighbor for the good purpose of building up that neighbor, building up that sweetheart of yours, that girlfriend or that boyfriend of yours, or that wife of yours, or that silly alcoholic husband of yours, or that rebellious son of yours. 
for the good purpose of building up that person not to provoke him and to destroy that person no let this word hit us let it build us up you know we have to we must we must please the other person forget your feelings and whatever that person did forget it well, you know otherwise forget it don't even call ourselves sons and daughters of god don't even call ourselves remnant you become just one more lions club member or rotary club member or some stupid thing you know the worldly thing you and i want to be called the sons and daughters of god then this is what we must do please our neighbor the way you speak that's it so to so building up the other person building up maybe that's a useless girlfriend you have maybe that's a useless husband you have maybe that's a good for nothing son you have but your duty my duty is to build up that person to that high level of spirituality what about the next one 1 thessalonians chapter 5 verse 11 One Thessalonians chapter five, verse eleven. Therefore, encourage one another, and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. I I have my doubts on that last five verses or words. And indeed, as indeed you are doing, are we doing it? Saint Paul says, therefore, encourage one another and build up each other. Build up each one other. Are we building up one another, my dear loved ones, in our homes? are we building up one another or are we you know destroying people's lives making them discouraged and sad by the silly way you and i speak remember we are studying about cleaning our rooms the speech room what is it you just check our lives encouraging one another and build up each other build up each other that's you know that's the exhortation of the word of god to build up one person maybe you have a you know i'm telling you again and again yes you know whatever the other person's got a problem is, but it is your duty my duty to make sure that we build up each other what about romans chapter 1 verses 11 and 12 it says for i am longing to see you that i may share with you some spiritual gift to strengthen you or rather so that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith both yours and mine my dear loved ones let me tell you i may be a so called preacher but the whenever whenever i am preaching i am being encouraged mutually encouraging one another st paul says i'm longing to see you romans my dear loved ones in rome i'm longing to see you so that i may share with you some spiritual gift to strengthen you whatever you any gifts you have you when you say that to me i get strengthened when i share things with you guys you all get strengthened that's so that we may be able to mutually encourage one another to our faith whenever i say something you know which helping me or blessing me when i share that you are being blessed because of that faith when some of you all say your testimonies i am getting encouraged and this is what we are supposed to do but are we doing it are we doing it what about timothy 1 timothy chapter 4 verse 12 see what he tells timothy that young boy timothy he says said paul says let no one despise your youth but set the believers an example in speech and conduct in love in faith in purity set the believers an example you and i must set an example to our own family members in our own home in speech and conduct by the way i speak by the way i behave are we doing that are we doing that my dear loved ones check our lives you know so sad we don't realize it what about the next one galatians chapter 6 verse 2 bear one another's burdens and in this way you will fulfill the fulfill the law of christ to bear one another's problems when you have a problem when i have a problem when we share with each other my dear loved ones what's happening when you bear when you hear someone says oh brother i am going through this problem i'm having a problem with my husband my wife or my children or my job my boss whatever we have to take that as our burden too and encourage that person strengthen that person and help that person to come out of that situation by giving encouragement not to say oh what to do and not to have a pity party you know what a pity party is we cry on you oh brother what to do your husband is like that my wife is like oh ho boo hoo boo hoo no 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 god doesn't want that you said forget it let's encourage let's use the word of god strengthen them encourage them are we doing that 
Are we bearing one another's, one another's burdens? Are we doing that? Check, my dear lovers. What about Hebrews chapter 12, verses 12 and 13? Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint but rather be healed. Therefore, lift your drooping hands. You know, when we go through problems in life, you know, we are like this. Like them, you know, we are finished, we are tired, we are weak. We don't want to live. I don't want to do anything. I just want to die, my Lord. I'm sick and tired of the problems. Your hands are drooping. Your shoulders are sagging. That's when you and I have to lift the other person's drooping hands. That's when you and I will have to lift up and strengthen the weak knees. I can't walk. I can't stand up, brother. I'm overwhelmed with these problems in life. I don't want to live. That's when you and I have to encourage one another and say, hey, brother Charles, lift your drooping hands. Come on, shake it up. Let's stand straight because we have to, you know, encourage one another. I don't feel like doing anything, brother. I'm weak, sister, you know. No. Come on, stand up the word of God, using the word of God, strengthening them. Instead of that, what are we saying? Are we condemning that person? Are we making fun of him? Are we? Be careful, my dear loved. I mean, there are times when we have to reprimand people, yes, the way Jesus did. But then, at the end of the day, he says, don't worry, my son, my daughter, I am with you. Don't be afraid. I am with you. I am going to strengthen you. That's our God, our God of encouragement. And it comes from the mouth. Encouragement comes from the mouth, not with the eyes and all that. You can't do this and say, encourage. No. The words which come from our mouth, are we doing that? No wonder we are going through all these problems. No wonder we are not enjoying the full blessings of the Lord. Why? Because our rooms are not clean. We still have got to change. We got to change. My dear loved ones, our duty is to lift the other person's drooping hands, sagging shoulders and strengthen the weak knees. And finally, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Yes, brother. So sorry. Hallelujah. Read, brother. Two are better off than one because together they can work more effectively. If one of them falls down, the other can help him up. But if someone is alone and falls, it's just too bad because there is no one to help him. That's a question you and I will have to answer one day when we stand before the Lord. And you and I stand getting the permission, waiting for the permission to enter heaven. That one question is going to come from our Creator. Where is the soul of your husband, that alcoholic husband? Where is the soul of that nagging wife of yours? Where is the soul of that drug addict son of yours? Where is the soul of that, you know, sexually immoral daughter of yours? Where is the soul of that rude boss of yours? Where is the soul of that mother-in-law who is always fighting with you? Where? <laughs> what, has, what is the answer you and I are going to give? That question. It is our duty to encourage them, to bring them out of their problems, my dear loved ones. Are we doing it? No. We are just coming day after day, listening to all these talks and remaining in the same rut. Useless. There's not much time. Remember, Amos 8.11 is going to come very soon. This is going to stop. Remember that. I always say that. Last, my last trip in Calcutta, Oxygen Church, my last, you know, if you go to the YouTube, you'll see what I spoke. I said, very soon the churches are going to close and it came. Closed. Very soon the Bibles will be taken away from your hand, torn. You'll be beaten up. Very soon the internet is going to finish. What are you going to do, my dear loved ones? You need the word of God here. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for anything. The words have to be here. Not enough to listen and then forget it. Create in me a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit within me 
Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me. Oh, and renew a right spirit within me. Brother Charles, I want you to lead all of us before the throne of grace and mercy. And ask the Lord to cleanse our rooms, especially that area where we fail to encourage one another. Where instead of provoking one another towards love and towards holiness, we are provoking them to come and sit. Yes, my Lord. Bless my brother Charles as he leads us in worship. Hallelujah. Abba Father, our Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit God, we can do nothing without you. Nothing. Forgive us, O Lord, for our selfishness, Forgive us, Lord, for our conceitedness. Lord, of not caring, Lord, for each other. But, Lord, build us up, Lord. Cast us not away, Lord, from thy presence, O God. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Master, we can do nothing without you. You are the vine, Lord. We are the branches. We can do nothing, Master. Hold us, Lord, in your most sacred heart. We cling to you, Lord. We will not let you go, Master. Give us your blessing today. Comfort us, Lord, in these areas, Lord, which we need, Lord. Help us to have a new zeal, Lord, for your word, Lord. A new zeal, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Not just with our mouths, Lord but with our whole being from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Help us, Lord, to remember the great commandment that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your strength and with all your mind. Help us to remember that, Lord, that if we love you, Lord, with all our heart, with all our strength and with all our minds, Lord, remember Remember us, Lord, that we, Lord, we just remember, Lord, this commandment, Lord, the greatest commandment, and to love one another as thou hast loved us, Lord. That is helping each other, Master. And so, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness, Lord, in these, in these times, Lord. Refresh us, renew us, restore us, to Mother Mary and all the saints and holy angels, St. Michael, St. Raphael, St. Gabriel. We ask for this prayer, Lord, to be taken to your holy throne. May it pierce the clouds. In Jesus' mighty and most holy, blessed, loving name we pray. Hallelujah, Amen. we praise you. We worship you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.